this what you see is a 220 volts 1000 watts DC motor now DC supply of 220 volts is not usually available so we make a boost converter to operate it at 12 volts DC supply using a battery now guys if you are an old subscriber of mine you might be familiar with this switching circuit which I constructed a few months back but if you are new you can find the construction link in the description of this very video so guys without any further delay I'm going to use this UPS transformer this is the blue and white wire which represents the high voltage side you can see the wires are thin because the output voltage is going to be high but the current is going to be less so this side is going to be on the other side keeping it like this and these wires are really thick means they are going to draw huge current making it the low voltage high current side these two red wires that you see i've already showed you in my previous video these will be connected to the black wires and this red wire is the tapping point to which the 12 volts DC input supply will be connected and this black wire that you see to this wire negative supply from a battery or a DC power source will be connected now strip it now guys here as you can see that I have a bridge rectifier that converts AC supply to DC supply Wanco KBPC 3510 capability of up to 35 amperes and this terminal is AC and this is DC positive so AC represents the blue wires these two which will be connected to the output terminals the high voltage side of the transformer to which I'm going to do the connection okay and the other one as well now guys just for safety I'm going to use this large DC capacitor 1400 microfarad with a voltage of up to 450 volts DC so we have to make sure that the polarity is same this orange wire that you see this indicates positive from the rectifier so positive will be connected to the positive okay positive has been connected now comes the negative so guys this is the 12 volt 7 h battery that I usually use okay let's keep it on this side this terminal is luckily positive so it's connected over here and this is negative which will be connected over here so guys here I'm going to use the same old cheap multimeter and uh, let's point it towards 1000 volts DC the other multimeter of mine is really expensive and I still don't know how much the output voltage is going to be and what is going to be the frequency and it also has a stand so it is more useful that way although I think I will have to use this piece to make it visible yeah and now it is let's turn it on and see how much output DC volts I'm getting this is the final negative terminal that will be connected to this 12 volts battery okay so keep watching the display screen whoa the output voltage is really high as high as 400 volts how is that possible maybe it's the open circuit voltage because of which the voltage is so high but when I connect an actual load the output voltage is going to reduce so with that hope let's connect the DC motor directly to the output terminals of the capacitor now guys here we have the DC motor running pretty good now here comes the terminal connection for it let's connect this wire to this one done now the second one okay yeah so both the wires have been connected okay go <laughs> wow the motor is actually running and the speed is also fine Okay, here I've connected my DC clamp meter with a capability of up to 600 amperes measuring current. Okay, so guys keep watching the display screen. Okay. You can see that the current is as high as 7 amps and it is continuously increasing. Oh around 9 amperes it is drawing which is a lot for a 12 volts battery this what you see is a 4000 watts motor speed controller that I'm going to use for DC motors now guys this is going to be the part 
two video and the link for part one video will be provided in the description you can check it out that video contains the wiring the connections and a few tests with induction motors a few resistive loads and universal motors high speed up to 14,000 rpm do check it out so for this video or project I'm going to use this ply board and I'm going to mount this controller on the ply board with the help of two provided screw slots and the next most important component is going to be a 35 amperes bridge rectifier without the rectifier the controller and the ply board look somewhat like this now let's make a point for drilling a hole for the rectifier now let's do the drilling and I'm going to use a screw to mount it properly and strongly on the ply board okay so with that being done let's move on to the connections of the rectifier to the controller so guys the two blue wires that you see are the AC terminals as indicated on the rectifier you see so these two blue wires will be connected to the output terminals of the controller these two are the output terminals line and neutral output as indicated here so blue wires will be connected over here and the overall output of this entire circuit is going to appear on this green wire and orange wire and it is going to be positive and negative accordingly because the output is DC so let's do the connections of the blue wires and here it's complete now it looks somewhat like this and guys this is a 24 volts DC motor so I'm going to use this motor for testing this controller it is just 24 volts and I'm going to run it from 60 to around 220 volts max like I'm going to force it okay so because it is a uh, free load like it is running freely no load has been given to the motor so it is not going to consume much of the current and run easily without burning out so let's start it This is a pretty big DC motor with a big flywheel attached and it has 180 volts, 4000 RPM and an input current of up to 4 amperes. So I'm going to run this with the controller. You might have seen the instantaneous dead stop function in many of the cordless drill machines and electric screwdrivers. So today in this video, I'm going to teach you how it occurs in the cordless drill machine or electric screwdriver and how you can also do it at home and it's very easy. Now guys, this what you see is a 24 volts, 500 watts permanent magnet DC motor used for making e-bike. So with this motor, I'm going to show you how the DC motors usually perform when connected to a battery. You see, so much high starting torque. Now what I wanted to show you was when I connect this and remove it afterwards, the motor continues to run. It's not at a dead stop. Okay. You see, it continues to run. Still running. It's not at a dead stop. So let's bring it to dead stop. 
so for that you will be needing a single push double throw switch this what you see is rated at 220 volts and up to 15 amperes and this is the max double throw switch i had so guys here as you can see that i've connected three wires this one this one and this one and all the three wires are connected on one side of the switch and the other side is completely open you see i have left out this side because this function is possible with just these three terminals so let's do the connections so the first part is taking the two wires from the dc motor and uh, take one leave the other one behind and connect it to the middle terminal of the switch red one is the middle and the other terminals this one and this one choose any of the two any one of the two and connect it to the battery any terminal of the battery here i've connected it to the negative terminal of the battery now when i will connect it it will start running okay you see now let's turn it off you see it is not running anymore that's the simple switch function okay so now comes the stopping part the instant dead stopping part so for that take the other terminal of this dc motor and the other left out terminal from the switch okay and connect them together like this but one terminal from the battery has been left out this is the tapping point which will be connected to the battery positive terminal okay starting it sorry actually this terminal is corroded you see the corrosion so for that i'm going to use this clip to keep it in contact with the battery terminal and now it should work okay starting it let's dead stop it <laughs> you see instant power stop this is how they do it in a cordless drill machine or an electric screwdriver once again super start and super stop dead stop just like a disc brake now guys the explanation behind it is when i push the switch to one side the terminal of the motor gets connected to the battery and the motor starts running at a really high speed but as soon as i push the switch to the other side the pushing of the switch not only disconnects one of the terminals of the motor from the battery but it also short circuits the two terminals of the motor creating a heavy load in which case the motor is actually acting as a really loaded generator